Well, now at 615, we are looking ahead to the solar phenomenon happening two months from today. The yeah, moon will block out the entire sun, and all you'll be able to see is this thing called the corona around the outside of the sun. On April 8th, millions of eyes in Ohio and across the country will look to the skies for that total solar eclipse. Now, if you don't have those special eclipse glasses like those folks, a simple option takes you back to grade school. You can take a pinhole projector with a paper plate like this and just make a tiny little hole with a thumbtack. Or head to your nearest home improvement store. For anybody out there who's a welder, uh, shade numbers 12, 13, or 14 are actually safe enough to use, and you could look at the sun with those as well. All right, so remember those numbers. The last total solar eclipse, though, that was visible for us was back in 2017. And the next one, after the one that's happening in April, will take place in about 20 years. Well, this morning we are live at Perkins Observatory in Delaware to talk about this eclipse. Don Stevens is the director there and joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. This is a pretty exciting moment for people in Ohio, really across North America. Uh, walk us through what's going to happen for, you know, four minutes and 28 seconds of totality. Uh, well, what's going to happen is the moon, as it orbits the Earth, is going to pass between the Earth and the sun, casting its shadow upon the Earth's surface. Um, its path is, uh, of the shadow across the Earth's surface is very narrow. Um, it only covers part of the state, so you have to be in the western or northern part of the state to see the eclipse. And the length of the eclipse will actually depend on how close to the center line you are. Uh, near the center line, it'll be over four minutes, but say like here in Delaware, we'll only get about two and a half minutes. And the farther you are from the center, the less of an eclipse you get. Don, talk about uh, Ohio Wesleyan, the connection there. You've seen a bigger interest in astrophysics uh, because of the eclipse. Yeah, we've seen some interest in uh, the program at the university. Um, yes, even though we're a small liberal arts school, we do have an astrophysics program. And uh, we encourage students to come check it out. It's a nice thing about a small school is you get lots of individual attention and a lot of hands-on experience working with your own data and things of that nature. We just love that Perkins Observatory is kind of right here in our backyard in central Ohio. But Don, earlier, we talked about what happened in 2017 when that eclipse passed through the northwest part of the country. We saw gridlock and traffic jams. Where will you be on April 8th? <laughs> Not in Ohio. Um, I'm uh, planning on heading where the, the prospects of clearer skies are. There's that old saying, April showers bring May flowers. Uh, that should kind of tell you what the weather might be like in Ohio at that time. South by Southwest is where he's heading, right? All right, Don. Exactly. Thank you so much Making for it. Right for the border. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so That's much great. for joining us this morning. Really appreciate the insight there. And it is open year round, so you don't have to just go right, right. around the eclipse time. You can awesome. go any time of year. But we should mention that there are some schools that are starting to cancel classes for that day. Wasn't on the calendar in the fall, but they said, yep, school's out. So Hilliard, kids, you do not have school on April 8th. The school's transitioning that on their academic calendar, but staff will still have to report for a work day. I've heard of snow days before, not solar days. <laughs> you could get everything you need to know about the eclipse by texting the word eclipse to 614-460-3345. You'll see where to get those special eclipse glasses for viewing parties and a list of which schools will be closed that day.